rendering is among the most critical moments in any 3D artist's life. You can have a quality work and still render out crap. Now, if you are a Blender user, you get three render options, EV, Cycles, and the old one which I wouldn't recommend anybody use it as a final renderer called Workbench. Now, the most common question amongst many beginners are which one should I use? EV or Cycles? Or should I just get an expensive third party renderer to get the job done? Now, if you conclude it's Cycles you should settle on, then my question is how good is Cycles? Right? Apart from Cycles, EV and Workbench, there are other render engines that works free in Blender. Also, there are others that come at a cost. Some important things to consider apart from budget is the kind of style you want your work to go with, your pipeline and workflow with other software, your expertise and years of experience. Yeah, we have people who render on a more professional level, so rendering might not seem as easy as you think. If you're a beginner trying out Blender for the first time, I can boldly tell you Cycles has been proven production-wise to be very competitive amongst most of the industry standards like V-Ray and Renderman. Cycles is one of the few render engines you can learn within a matter of seconds without any special guidance. One thing to keep in mind is all of Blender's default render engines requires a powerful computer just to give you that little speed you need when rendering. I have a lot of videos coming up on render engines, especially for Blender, but in today's video, I will be breaking down the main purpose between Cycles and Eevee and what both render engines were purposely meant for. Without wasting any more time, let's There is no way we can talk about how Blender has come to redeem a lot of artists with low budget and most professionals who also have integrated Blender within their pipeline just to cut down costs without talking about cycles. Blender does more but the budget bit is the savior of the day. Let's talk about cycles and conclude with EV. The first thing to know about cycles is that Cycles is an offline renderer. Now, what is an offline renderer? An offline renderer goes through a process of calculating the lighting, materials, and geometry of a scene to produce an accurate image as possible. Cycles is the most feature-rich production-proven renderer available in Blender. It's a path tracing engine. Oh, James, come on. What's a path tracing engine? I hear this all the time, but I still don't get it. Okay, a path tracing engine involves the calculation of light bounces that reflects off the surface of all the objects in your scene and creates an image based on that data. Now, the result you get in cycles is very close to full realism in terms of how the lighting behaves. The only real difference is in cycles, you limit the number of light bounces that you work with as compared to the real world where the number is infinite. Now, to summarize the difference between online and offline renderers, EV being an online renderer engine will prioritize blazing fast speed, whilst offline renderers such as Cycles focuses on maximum level of quality. So you get the quality you want with Cycles but slower rendering and then you have EV giving you quicker rendering times but crappy results in most cases. There are certain features that has been polished within Cycles that I think works really well and a couple of them are powerful PBR shading nodes, accurate subsurface scattering. This is something I look out for in every render engine I've used. Good to see Cycles implemented. There is also vector displacement and adaptive subdivision, volume scattering and absorption, caustics, cryptomate support and more. If your main goal is to create something that emulates realism, then Cycles is your better option. Though I won't recommend Cycles when it comes to rendering game assets because it's just not the right engine for those kind of works. I won't say why because it's almost a whole topic on its own. Cycles as a render engine should be one of the main go-to renderers when it comes to scenes that has to do with real looks. A couple of examples are designing objects for architecture manufacturing and concept arts. Animation takes a long time to render in cycles, I won't lie to you, and it takes too much time depending on the length of your sequence and also how real you want it to be. If your animation needs to be centered on realism, then Blender Cycle is the best free render engine out there you can try. Now, the only catch here is 
you need a better machine to run that task. One thing about Cycles is that it's heavily maintained and updated. That's just one thing I love about Blender, maintenance and new features. Cycles recent development is solely focusing on optimization. Now this isn't part of my video but I just thought it wise to share it with you guys since it's an update that we'll be getting soon. This should be good because as much as Cycles that is best to level up with the likes of V-Ray, Renderman in terms of speed, it being optimized for speed and other final finishes will be a massive plus for both the engine and Blender as a whole. Okay, back to the topic. There is something called Optics Powered Rendering. Now what it does is it leverages your RTX cores to drastically improve rendering, thus cutting down the render time. Now with this implemented into Cycles, paired with the upcoming optimization for Cycles, I can tell you there is more good news to come for Blender users. already. Cycles is not too fast but it's a quick path tracer with multiple viewports and render denoiser including a powerful OIDN on CPU and an Optics GPU denoiser. Nvidia and AMD GPU users also get a feature for multi-GPU rendering. Now, every 3D artist uses a particular render engine based on certain specific reasons and wouldn't mind jumping off to use other render engines if they possess those kind of futuristic reasons. Also, most people don't use certain render engines because of their quirks. Every render engine, just like softwares have quirks, when I'm choosing a software, I consider its quirk and make sure I choose a particular software or render engine with quirks I can work around it if they should show up. A couple of downsides to Cycles is its limitation in caustic and light linking. Most professionals I know wouldn't render on Cycles if they have to render out scenes with light linking and caustics. I wouldn't want to make mention of any plugin in this video but there are plugins for that if you really need it badly. Most people also tend to use Laxcore render in cases like this because it has the caustic and light linking ability and it's also free for Blender. So now, what's the main purpose of Cycles and at what time should Cycles be used for rendering? Both Cycles and EV can be used on the same project but at different stages. Now this is just my take. EV should be used as a visualization tool during the project whilst you are building up the scene or designing an object. Cycles on the other hand should be used for the final render because it just brings out the exact quality you previewed within EV. Great. We are done with Cycles. Let's talk about EV. Blender's EV was purposely designed as a real-time viewport to be a previous tool to support the shading workflow of Cycles but along the way EV got out of hand and is now a beast on its own. Like I said before, there are two types of renderers, an online renderer and an offline renderer. EV is a typical example of an online renderer whereas Cycles is an offline renderer. Now an online renderer gives you the ability to navigate your scene in real time without having to wait for any calculations. In case you still don't understand, let me take time to break it down for you. In order to calculate and produce images in real time, it uses a process known as rasterization. Now, rasterization works by calculating the data of a 2D scene using the 2D view that you see on the screen and calculates the positioning of the objects, materials and lighting on a pixel by pixel basis. In other words, it's actually faking the 3D effect in a 2D estimate to dramatically save on performance cost. Look, the margin between offline and online rendering is super huge. Placing a real-time renderer head-to-head -head with a path tracing renderer isn't fair, especially in areas such as global illumination, refraction and caustics. But aside these downsides, EV is very much powered with render speed, volume rendering, subsurface scattering, hair support, a powerful shader to RGB node for NPR shading and the recently added motion blur and cryptomate support. EV is being developed to be a complete production renderer and because of this, there are features being developed to help push EV onto that level. Now these are a couple of downsides to using EV. As it stands now, you get no rasterization, design, reflection, refraction, contact shadows, 
and more are screen space effects, right? Meaning that there is no true path tracing calculating light bouncing beyond the rendering screen. And this causes bigger problems such as light bleeds. I'm sure most of you have encountered one before, but maybe you didn't know it went by this name. Okay, so light bleeds are when light goes through the other side of the object's geometry, even if the surface is closed off and no light should be passing through. This is common when you have a source of light close to a layer of a thin geometry and a solution to it will be for you to use a solidify modifier to make that geometry thicker. By comparison, light bleed is not a defect you would encounter when using cycles because Cycles calculates the lighting based on the light path and not the basic information provided by the viewport. This is very challenging to people who include EV in some of their final rendering. So now what's the main purpose of EV, right? EV, I would say, is great for visualizing, like I said when I compared it with um, Cycles in the beginning, because EV allows you to preview the appearances of your models in real time whilst you have your materials, textures, and lighting all applied. This makes it the best free choice for creating concept arts. It's also the best choice when you want a better representation of what a scene or model would look like when completed. You know most games are built from the ground up using the rasterization method of rendering. This makes EV a best option when it comes to previewing game assets with its ray tracing path providing graphical extra to make the game look nicer when it comes to shadow and reflection. If you are looking forward to creating materials in game engines, can you try using EV to get a very good idea of what the model will look like before you export? This is just my own personal take. That is, if you want to, but if you are sure of your art and want to render straight up, good luck. Until my next video, peace out.